Hey everyone, this is MOSFET, your simple tech news update. You probably all heard about Apple's new Vision Pro announcement recently, but there's been a bunch of other VR and AR hardware news that happened this week. At Display Week 2023, VR optics startup Hypervision showed off a new prototype dev kit for a headset with an astounding 240 degree horizontal field of view. YouTuber Sadly It's Bradley visited their booth and made an informative video explaining how the VR240 Gen 2 stitches together pancake lenses combines multiple smaller micro displays and mixes in some clever image processing to create a compact headset with incredibly wide viewing angles. Check out the links in the description for more info. In other news, Ethereum-based VR metaverse Somnium Space updated their Somnium VR1 headset. In a blog post and video, CEO Artur Sykov explained how they have now gotten the design ready for mass production, which should begin later this year. Another headset coming later in the year is the MetaQuest 3, which was officially announced the other day. This new standalone headset boasts twice the GPU processing power compared to the previous model, higher res displays, color pass-through, slimmer optics, new controllers and more. Prices will start at $499. Lenovo are getting in on the action too, recently launching the Think Reality VRX Mixed Reality headset worldwide, starting with UK customers. This particular platform is geared towards enterprise users, specifically for business settings, with standard features seen in most modern headsets, like 6 degrees of freedom, full colour mixed reality pass-through etc. It is out now for £1300, with the device as a service rental option available for businesses. Another enterprise-focused augmented reality headset announced this week was the Vive Business Edition by HTC, along with their Business Plus system for managing fleets of devices. It seems everyone and their mother is scrambling to up their game ahead of the official Apple launch. In other electronics news, LG unveiled a very strange product. The Stand By Me Go is basically a battery-powered 27-inch screen that fits inside a briefcase. It runs for three hours at a time and has its own adjustable stand and speakers included. I've never seen anything like this and have no idea who its target market is. In drone news, Wingcopter has teamed with Siemens Healthineers to provide drone deliveries across Africa. The two-way delivery system will use the company's hybrid Wingcopter 198 drones and will be transporting blood samples, vaccines and pharmaceuticals to accelerate sample analysis and diagnosis for rural communities. Moving on to artificial intelligence, and Google has been slowly rolling out its generative AI search feature to selected users. It can be asked complex questions, will understand context, and will pull up relevant info. In their demonstration, they showed it generating a training plan to run a 10K on the fly. I wonder if this is going to lead to greater centralization of data, with Google acting even more as a gatekeeper, since users won't need to visit the actual source blogs and websites anymore to find information. What are the implications when Google's AI can just take your work and reword it? Google Research also uploaded a new paper last week. StyleDrop is a text-to-image generator which takes a reference image and generates new images in the exact same style. Built on top of their Muse model, this thing is very impressive and I imagine a little scary for the graphic designers and illustrators out there. Check out the website for more info and tons of examples of what it can do. Nvidia continue their work in AI research too, this time showing off Nvidia Ace, a new generative AI tool for games, which can create more dynamic conversations with NPCs, not only with the voice, but also with character facial animations too. Open world games of the future are going to be wild. And ending this update with some manufacturing news, a research team at UCI has developed a new low temperature method for 3D printing optical grade glass, opening the door for microelectronic systems with high resolution, visible light nanophotonics capabilities. Current methods require over 1100 degrees Celsius, whereas this approach operates at around 650 degrees, meaning it can now be used to deposit glass nanostructures directly onto semiconductor chips without damaging them. Alright, that's it for this update. Subscribe if you'd like to see more cutting edge news. See you next time.